The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, roll the video. Okay, so, y'all, this December has been intense, and I did not want to miss an upload. I kid you not, I was not going to do it. So I told myself, because I had so much on my plate today, which you still want to get this December done, make one where you know you're not going to need an outline for. So I actually wanted to save this for, like, towards the end of Disney December for why I decided to do this, but your girl... Captain needs something to upload today. Y'all are not about to be catching me slipping, skipping a day of Disney summer. No. So I was like, what is something that I could talk about for 20 minutes straight with no cuts so I can go ahead and just upload this easily? And I was like, yeah, it's time for you to talk about Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic. Now, you guys are familiar with my blog that I have on my website, which you guys should check out. It's free to read, okay? Like, it's free. We love free things over here on The Pirate Ship, okay? And there's going to be a lot more free things that are going to be on my website coming in 2023. Y'all, I've been working my ass off, all right? But I have been, I don't know why I'm messing with this. I start messing with some random shit when I'm in the middle of filming. But basically, um, I posted a article on my website and it's mainly like, it doesn't count as articles, I don't know, but it's just kind of like me casually talking about my thoughts and opinions on the world and a more put together standpoint, just in case, because a lot of you guys be telling me you want to use my stuff for references and whatnot, and I would feel... It's like, you know, when people want to use things for references, it's like no cussing over there, more put together and all that. But you guys can use my channel too, but you know, the blog is also there for that. And there was one article that I recently posted called, I kind of feel bad for Doug Walker and I don't like that. And that is just kind of like me wanting to go in a little bit more detail about what that um, blog post was about and just talking about it here. I will have a link down below for anybody that is interested in reading it. Now, Disney Snipper, if you have heard this before me on my channel, I just want to let you guys know I am not the first person to do a Disney Snipper. I am not the person who started Disney Snipper. Disney Snipper was actually a series created by Doug Walker, who is best known as the Nostalgia Critic, and he is the star of the web series Nostalgia Critic. This is a man that I used to highly look up to during my teen years and I will be completely honest like because I always say the main three people that encourage me to make a YouTube channel are Amanda Steele who is expecting congratulations to her Maddie Bragg still love her follow her on Instagram and Andre of Black Nerd Comedy and I still check in to watch him from time to time but another person I'd say that somebody I don't really keep up with like that no more would have to be Doug Walker and so much of it just kind of has to do with the fact that I started to feel a bit uncomfortable with his content and his opinions and whatever the fuck that we're gonna get into later on during this discussion but Disney's number is what I got this from and I was like, I want to do my own version of Disney Simber and I want to do Disney Simber my way. Basically, Doug Walker's version of Disney Simber is he basically started off with just reviewing all of the Disney movies. It started off with him doing all the hand-drawn films and then he went to doing the CGI animated films and then he went to doing the Pixar films. Then he went to doing the Studio Ghibli films and then he went to doing the live action films. Then he did the Disney Channel films and now he's just kind of doing whatever Disney property he wants to do that's come out in the recent years for the most part Doug Walker's Disney December is very much review based but I wanted Harriana Hook's Disney December to be more let's analyze this company and its properties okay 
because i did do disney December about two years ago in 2020 oh my god that was two fucking years ago oh well and that went pretty well it was a mix of me you know analyzing the disney company but it also was me doing some reviews and whatnot like with prom i love that movie so much and i think more people should watch it i'm probably gonna bring it up a lot more in my um content that i make in 2023 but i just have doug walker on my mind a lot lately because like i said i stole disney summer from him like people were trying to say oh you took disney yeah i stole disney summer from him i didn't steal it it's just kind of like my interpretation of his web series disney summer that i very much did enjoy but now that i look back on it i realized there was just kind of a lot that was said in those things that really just kind of fucked with me a little bit because some th the things that doug was saying and i'm in no way shape or form saying that this man is racist okay but a lot of white people can be racially sensitive often and he was saying some misogynistic things within these videos just as well and the one video where i realized that i just no longer really needed to be watching doug walker like that was his video that he made about the cheetah girls and like black girl me support harry on hook.com i got cheetah girls inspired merchandise there haha <laughs> not that little shameless plug i just did but his video about the cheetah girls the first one especially really bothered me because it's obvious that Disney makes certain videos for certain, like not certain videos, certain movies and shows for certain people. And the Cheetah Girls is something that was always made for black girls. Like that was a property made by a black woman for black girls to enjoy. So of course that wasn't really going to be for him to get and i will admit that the first movie was very sloppily put together because i am somebody that read the book series they ping pong what they wanted to put in the books it wasn't in chronological order the movie didn't even really start off with them introducing who the cheetah girls actually were it's a mess okay but it's like ghetto fabulous i love the fashion i love the aesthetic i love the music it's a guilty pleasure film but him being someone that doesn't understand the nature of this movie and it's aesthetic and it's just appeal to like you know the black audience and just black cinema in general because i consider the first cheetah girls movie to be a black movie because it's the only one that is realistic to the books that are black as fuck okay the real black as fuck not no kenya bear shit okay so that right there was just when i realized i didn't really want to watch his version of disney simber anymore but that was when i really started to phase out because that was when i was finally stop letting Doug Walker's opinions affect mine. So that is why I just kind of wanted to do my own version of Disney December because this was a series that I did enjoy watching a lot in my teen years but I wanted to make my own version of that. But as I said I took Disney December from him and it's just weighing on me so much it is just heavy on my mind. But it's one thing in particular that is just kind of stuck in the back of my brain it's because I kind I hate the fact that I feel bad for a man that is almost old enough to be my father. I cannot fucking stand that doug walker like i said is somebody that i looked up to and just because he was the first person to do something that being like you know popularizing the web series you know having an online alter ego you know making you know nostalgia ba based content and videos and and reviews about family and children's entertainment and whatnot while he was the first to do it that doesn't mean that he's the best and part of the reason why doug walker is you know still pretty much relevant when it comes to this conversation because you know when it comes to youtubers a lot of them phase in and out and whatnot it's because he was one of the first to do this like i'm gonna be real there would be no harry on a hook this channel would not be here if it weren't for the influences of the nostalgia critic like i would probably be still making lifestyle content like maddie Bragg and Amanda Steele if it weren't for like you know Nostalgia Critic or I'll even just be doing like little reviews here and there like Andrea Blackner comedy me actually wanting to go in depth and looking back on the shows and stuff that I used to watch but I do it from a different lens where he's just like oh this is bad because of this and I'm like no this is bad because this is actually harmful to our society but you guys get the gist of it so Doug Walker is you know He's very important when it comes to internet history. We have to give him that because he was one of the first people to do this. But 
when it comes to you know being a creative and a lot of people i know a lot of people that are in my friend circle a lot of people within the cartoon community a lot of us wow people know us for our hot takes and whatnot and reviews and analysis and all of that jazz when it comes to other people's work a lot of us do have our own work we have our original properties or we have fan made versions of things like that in the sorts like y'all know i have my web series the progenies and then i also have uh, another web series that is in the works that sh hopefully we can get an episode the first the pilot out at the end of december when disney summer is over fingers crossed we're gonna see okay we're gonna see how that goes but a lot of us we have original work we have original property we have our own interpretations of this and that and the third so this isn't new a lot of you know creatives online that you know m make you know content about other people's stuff their reviews and whatnot we have our own series we have our own you know works and whatever the fuck that's pretty much normal for people that are interested in this kind of work to make their own things. And Doug Walker also is one of those people that has one of those too. Now, for the most part, a lot of the times when I look at, you know, YouTubers work on their own and whatnot, it pretty much holds up. There is some good qualities there. It's pretty good for the most part. It's pretty decent. I wouldn't necessarily come out and say that it's bad. So Doug Walker got into this. It's called Demo Reel. Lady Emily posted a really great video about it. I will have her video link down below that basically just explained the overall of Demo Reel. And I couldn't help but think back to Lady Emily's video. And then also the reason why I'm doing Disney Simber is because like I said, it's because of him. I, there would be no Disney Simber if it weren't for Doug Walker. I can't help but like feel bad for him because Demo Real is his web series that's outside of Nostalgia Critic where Nostalgia Critic is just him analyzing other people's work like a lot of what we do on YouTube and then Demo Real was like his like you know creative property and his own creative work and it is not good okay I tried to watch it years ago when it was like you know and this was like before like after he started being a critic again I tried to watch Demo Reel. I just could not fuck with it. I did not like it. The potential was there and I will admit that. But knowing that the reason that, you know, it's alleged. I'm pretty sure. Is it true? I don't know. Is it alleged? I don't know. But no, we can tell by the way them numbers was looking. The main reason Nostalgia Critic was brought back is because the Demo Reel was such a flop. Like it was actually terrible and I felt like the fan base was starting to leave because so many people love Doug Walker for the Nostalgia Critic. And mind you, part of that has to be with the fact that they didn't find other people to watch it this time period. We have to, you know, bring that up because that's part of the reason why i stopped watching doug walker in the first place is because i finally started discovering other creators especially black ones the main people i really needed to be watching um and i like i said i was andre was carrying me during this entire time okay andre a black nerd comedy i need to meet him one day because he done this so much for my teen years do literally help me with everything I was dealing with. But anyway, let's get back to Demo Real and Doug Walker. Demo Real was like a flop. It's okay to go ahead and admit it. And it's a lot of things where people say this is a flop, this is a flop. No, like Demo Real was actually a flop because it was not good. Like it was booty, booty, butt cheeks. Like the significant say, booty butt cheeks. That's how the Demo Real was. And it just was not worth no like uh-uh uh-uh y'all i kid you not i'm not even trying to be mean or anything like that because like i said there was potential there i'm not gonna lie but he wanted to do his own work because he was just like yeah i'm always talking about other people's work let me go ahead and do my own and it's not the fact that it wasn't bringing in the kind of attention that nostalgia critic was bringing no because you're always gonna have like you know that drop in views and like you know support when you change up your content that's pretty normal that it happens to a lot of people or you have the change in views whatever it wasn't that it's the fact that almost all of the reception that this series was getting was bad 
that's why it was just very much jarring and it's just like yeah this show did so bad that like I kind of have no choice but to bring back that old web series that I honestly don't give a fuck about doing anymore and I'd say like the nostalgia critic after you know the demo real period and before it is like an up in quality like you know the better camera quality better sound quality all of that like that stuff is much better but I noticed that like it was a shift in storytelling now like it's actually kind of like a story now like we did have the story with the nostalgia critic in, in the beginning with Casper and all of that shit like that that was actually kind of funny okay and also I don't care how much he hated that movie I don't know why but like him hating Casper made me go harder for that movie okay that was my shit growing up that's still one of my guilty pleasure movies okay he tried to make me hate Scooby-Doo we didn't do that the cat in the hat is a you know a favorite of mine even though fuck dr seuss love it there's just a lot of things back then where i'm just like you're not making me hate this movie but then there was a lot of stuff back then that actually did make me hate this movie but moving on to that i noticed that like the vibe of the newer nostalgia critic episodes it was a lot more similar to like a demo reel because the overall gist of demo reel was just them kind to take things and like make them better like take original properties and make them better that's like not an original concept but everybody does it differently and there's nothing wrong with that okay absolutely nothing wrong fucking wrong with that so when it comes to the newer nostalgia critic videos a lot of it is just kind of like them reenacting scenes from movies and shows and whatever the fuck like so it was like a tone and shift with the show and I'm like I said I don't know this man I can't make assumptions about him but it does seem like he is incorporating what he wanted to do with Demo Reel with the Nostalgia Critic and I gotta say I'm even though a lot of the stuff is very much tired in the new ones where it's like they're trying too hard to be funny that very that fell very flat hey that's offensive but no one is pointing it out please don't do that shit it's just kind of like it feels like more original content like what they were going for with demo reel but because they have that nostalgia critic name attached to it and it still is in the nostalgia critic format where they basically go through and dissect a bad movie which they really don't dissect it all that much they just kind of watch it and make jokes here and there it's still kind of the same but with this they're acting out scenes and whatnot and they actually have their own original plots and whatever the fuck so there is a shift in the new nostalgia critic than it was in the old one but it's just like so painful to me like it pains me and I low-key pity this guy because of this shit that your original work did not do that well so you had to go back to doing the other project that you stopped to do that for the sake of you having income and I understand people got bills to pay everybody gotta eat and he be they be making a good book doing this online you know based content that's the reason why so many people have turned to it and it helps a lot of people out with their lives and it's especially helpful for those that have certain things going on because i'm gonna be real as a college student doing you know online based content and whatnot is very much beneficial for me because I am able to, you know, work a little bit on my own schedule, not all that much. But I do understand why, like, you know, he still wanted to continue doing internet content, but he kind of had to do what he knew it was going to pay him. And like, that's me right now. Disney Simber, y'all love my Disney content. My most viewed videos are about Disney. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do something that I enjoy, but I'm also gonna do something that is gonna give me that ad revenue I need to pay my bills, all right? Like, ha ha. And I didn't pick my nose. I don't care what nobody said. I didn't. My finger just flew in my nose by accident. And I'm gonna get some pants at the side. Y'all not about to be calling me nasty. See? You can't call me nasty. You got this big old thing of hand sanitizer right there for me. But moving back to how I said I just kind of don't like that I feel so bad for him because it's just like oh my gosh like his original work didn't do well so he had to go back to doing this and that and the third and I'm gonna say it like people people don't want to make things bad like people don't really go in the intentions of making something bad like I had to learn this in school like from one of my theater professors they were like 
try to be kind all the time when it comes to you know people's creative work because a lot of times they don't really go in with the intentions of making bad things and that is part of the reason why when it comes to a lot of the stuff I talk about remember when I used to do blank is a bad movie or blank is a bad show um I still found you know ways to talk about things that like I did enjoy with those like especially with Liv and Maddie Liv and Maddie is something that I absolutely fucking hated I did not enjoy that show at all but I told myself you need to at least find at least one thing about living Maddie that you liked and that you enjoyed because a lot of people put their blood sweat and tears into making this show no matter how much you thought it was terrible and how much you didn't you couldn't stand it and I love the mother in the show like that was like the main thing that was able to get me through that so like I said they didn't really want to make them all real bad they didn't really go in with the intention of making the show terrible but it's just kind of scary to see that like he wants to do original stuff but it's just he tried it before and it didn't work out it's just like sometimes you just don't have it sometimes you just don't have it sometimes you just don't have the creativity for certain things and it's sad but it happens that's okay and that's why it's important to have collaborators to help you out with certain things because I know some people were talking about how they can't fucking write but they know how to draw and they were like hey if I collaborate with this writer right here I can have them you know write the story and I just draw it out whereas sometimes you have people that can only write and they're not really that great with drawing and they'll collaborate with an artist I've met so many people like this when I go to cons and whatnot okay it's not uncommon for a creative to be struggling in one creative area but being a lot stronger in another okay that's pretty much normal that's part of the reason why a lot of people have teams that's why a lot of people collab and that's part of the reason why a lot of people have writing teams just as well because I'm gonna be real I can't write fantasy I can't write science fiction worth a shit I absolutely fucking can't I cannot do it and I know that if I wanted to work on a project where I worked on somebody when it came to like you know this mystical and magical realm type shit I know damn well that that person is gonna have to write all that while I write all the people stuff like all the human stuff the interactions the coming of age tale and all of that I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses I know what I can and cannot do everybody has that about them you're not gonna be able to do everything because I remember somebody had said something to me the other day because I was talking about I was like would y'all be surprised if I told y'all I knew how to play piano because I do know how to play piano. That's one thing a lot of people don't know about me. Like, it's actually funny. And I want to start playing the piano again. Because it's something that I genuinely didn't hate. And they were like, you're literally so talented. What can't you do? And I was like, baby, I can't do a lot there's a lot of shit that I can't do I can't work a cash register if you guys want to have something on me because I know a lot of y'all be like oh my gosh I wish I could be like you this and that theory. I got my own struggles and my own problems y'all I don't know how to work a cash register absolutely fucking not I can not work a cash register for shit I am not fit for working in retail or fast food I can do other service jobs too because I've, I've done those before but like the cash register is just not for me and I can't do that shit okay everybody has their strengths and everybody has their weaknesses and with Doug Walker his weakness was like making his own original work and he was better off just like you know reviewing other people's stuff but also I'll say this I wouldn't really say there has been an improvement with his work I'd say like I'd say the quality like you know the way it looks and the way it sounds that has gone up and we see that they are a little bit more creative with the you know the segments where they're like you know interacting and doing all of that like you know the shit that cuts away from the movie review and all of that and them acting out scenes I'd say that has changed and that has improved but his actual style of like you know reviewing and analyzing has not changed much I'd say and it's it's not that great and that is part of the reason why I just really couldn't get with his work anymore and it just didn't stick for me and that's okay like I said I'm human you're human it's normal to outgrow things it happens but like I said I can't stand that I feel bad for this man because like I said it's just like he just didn't have it and it didn't work out and I kind of just saw it all before my eyes 
But then also I kind of have to blame myself on this part because I was like, well, baby, if you didn't have that parasocial relationship with this man, you wouldn't be in this pickle. Like I had to take some responsibility for the way I'm feeling this way because nobody wants to grow up and see like, you know, like somebody that they idolize. And like I said, like their idols and whatnot, like Doug Walker is a regular person like you and me. Okay. He just, he does exactly what I do, making content specifically for the internet. I, I get it like we see each other we're very much similar but like I said I found him when I was a teenager very vulnerable dealing with a lot at that time and I turned to creators like him that make videos about you know old things that I watched and cartoons and everything like that and a lot of the creators from that time period and I still watch them from time to time now I have seen that there has been improvements with their works but I didn't really get that with him but like I said I can't help but like I'm, I'm the only person I can blame with this shit. Like, I know when people be like, it's your fault for getting attached to a person you didn't know and this and that and a third. Like, yes, I get that. But then I also have to remember how young I was. But then also it's just kind of like, I'm glad that I did have that Doug Walker phase where like I idolized him and I thought he could do no wrong. And I thought he was right about everything. And then when I finally, you know, started to get older and realized that I can form my own thoughts and opinions, and mainly when I started to become uncomfortable with some of the racially insensitive and misogynistic shit that he would say and include in his work, that is when I finally started to open my eyes and realize, hey, this person fucks up too. This is somebody that's not perfect to you and you should think for your own and form your own thoughts and opinions about the things that you enjoy. So when I realized that and then started making my own content, it's just, I like I said, things happen. That's life. Like I said, I'm very much a woman unhinged. I don't regret having this Doug Walker phase that I had, okay? Like, I absolutely fucking don't. I don't because I was able to learn a valuable lesson from it and is that one you shouldn't idolize regular regular people like you shouldn't idolize anybody okay but online creators especially are people that do not need to be idolized and you should think for yourself you shouldn't let this one white man you know determine your thoughts and opinions on a lot of the media that you enjoy and you have no problem with enjoying either it's just like it's it's very like like I said I don't regret it but then also I just kind of had to sit there and think about like what about it don't I regret and like I learned how to think for myself I learned and I grew from that and I also kind of learned what not to do with my content <laughs> like from watching a lot of him I knew what not to do or sometimes I would look back on things that I did and I'm like hey you were kind of a lot like him right there maybe not do that again and work on that because like I said that's part of the reason why I go in and try to find something that I do enjoy about it because that is one thing that I did pick up from him when he would be talking about shit that he doesn't like he'd go in and mention something hey but there is some good here because I remember his video about cool world I love cool world y'all not gonna convince me that that movie bad I don't care it's bad I don't care I don't see I didn't see it mm, no cool world is bad oh that's a jump scare no i don't care cool world is great but at the end of his cool world video that was when i finally realized i was starting to grow from him because i realized that his opinions on the movie didn't make me hate it because cool world is not a movie for everybody some people are gonna understand it differently than others and that's just another thing i had to learn from you know doug walker there's just certain thing he's not gonna get like the cheater girls movie it just wasn't for him and that's okay that's art to me but to him he might think it's dog shit okay but with cool world i remember in the end he did praise how beautiful the animation was and how it was like cinematically beautiful that is one thing i did pick up from him when it comes to doug walker he has had both positive and negative influences on me as a creator positive there be no disney number without him I most likely would not be doing the kind of content I do like I would most likely be a commentary channel still but I would be talking about celebrity news and gossip and all that shit like no like my niche would not be here like there would not be talks about you know my childhood shows and like the new shows that are still coming out that are for people of all ages and animation and anime and all that jazz most likely would not have that I wouldn't have you know thought about looking back on things from my childhood and realizing that's not that great 
but then also I realized with like you know I learned a lot from him I wouldn't you know be here making this kind of content but also I learned what not to do like I learned not to be overly mean I learned from him to try to find something that you do like about it I also learned what not to do from him is to go out of way to watch things that you know you're gonna hate and then also I learned that like it's kind of not good to just sit and pick apart a movie throughout its entirety of its run with just making mean jokes about this and that and the third <sighs> When I realized I was coming to the end of like, you know, enjoying Doug Walker, it was because I like, you know, started to make my own kind of like, you know, think pieces and whatnot, a lot of the media that he reviewed that he didn't enjoy, but I liked. I just grew and just, I changed. And like a lot of the content that I liked as a teenager, it just doesn't appeal to me now as I am a woman in my early twenties. It's just kind of, odd and it's just kind of weird and sitting here realizing that Disney Simber wouldn't be a thing if it weren't for him it kind of takes me out a little bit hi everyone the captain here I just wanted to get on here real quick and tell you guys thank you so much for your support I have gotten so much fan art from you guys and I've met plenty of y'all in person at the conventions that I have been at and also, thank you guys so much for coming to the panels that I host. It means so much to me. You guys are so great. I appreciate every little last bit of support you guys give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say thank you 100 times, but I truly do mean it. Thank you. Will just blow your mind. Buttercup by feeling three at a time. Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt. And blossom will lead them out of their rut. Cherish and power puff, two of a kind. Both wanna save the world before bad times. From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA. The power puff girls are just here to stay.